All right, so a lot of people want me to make this video, so you know what? I'm gonna make it happen, and you can already read the title, Poor Man's Type R versus LSV Tech, which one is better? And the outcome of this video might shock you a little bit, but I'm gonna, you know, try to not stay biased here, because you already know I like the Poor Man's over the LSV Tech, but I'm gonna give both sides of the engines and their pros and cons of each, and when you should build, uh, you know, when you should build either or, and then I'm gonna kinda just say which one is better at the end. So, let's start with the Poor Man's Type R, because that's what I know more about. So the Poor Man's Type R has a B18C block with a B16 head, Type R, type R internals, and you know, it has high compression. We should already know this, you know, it's, you know, that's that's what I said in the what is a poor man's type R engine video. Uh, so you can go ahead and watch that if you want to learn more about it. But that's kind of like the simple way to put it. And you know, if we're talking about stock versus stock, because I feel like that's the only way we can that's the only way we can really compare these two. Uh, if we're talking stock versus stock, you know, I feel like the poor man's type R is gonna be more reliable. And the reason why I say that is because it's an engine that's closer to stock it, it came from the factory that way it has also has a higher a uh, higher um, rod to stroke ratio which doesn't really mean much but it is definitely something that can make an engine run less reliably and could cause you know bottom end problems so that's really all I have to say about that um, those are really those are really the only pros to the poor man's type R everything else is you know, more lenient on the LSV Tech side, and when it comes to cons for the Poor Man's Type R, you know, it's expensive, and you're not going to get that much horsepower and torque out of it, you know, if you were to just build an LSV Tech. So you should already be saying to yourself, well, why the heck would I build, you know, a Poor Man's Type R if I'm going to be building an engine? I'm going to make the most power out of out of my engine that I can. So. Why should I build a poor man's type R? I feel like the only time you should build a poor man's type R is for two things. So, number one, if you want a stockish engine that, you know, it can be a daily driver and can take occasional abuse. So, I feel like if your engine can't take occasional abuse, you probably shouldn't have put that engine in your car and you probably should have stayed stock or it's, you know, stayed with stayed uh you probably should have kept the engine that you had in previously. The other thing, the other thing that I would recommend you build a poor man's for is a road course car or something that's going to take extreme abuse. Now, the reason why I say extreme abuse is because when you're on a road course, when you're tracking your car on a road course, not on a quarter mile strip, it's going to be in the red line zone for quite some time. So we're talking four 20 minute sessions, that's 80 minutes of non-stop abuse on your entire car actually but you know when we're talking about that and engines when you're in that higher rpm red uh, rev range you know that's a lot of stress put on the engine if you didn't build your engine right or if you didn't build your engine for higher rpms then you probably shouldn't be in higher rpms that's why i feel like the poor man's type r is better suited for road course conditions compared to the lsv tech so now we're going to talk about the LSV Tech, and we're going to talk about, the, and we're going to talk about the pros and cons, and why I feel like, you know, it's probably the better option for all of you. So, LSV Tech is a B18B block or B18A block or whatever non VTEC block you want to use, and it's just a VTEC head with you know all the other type of uh, internals that you want to include. But like I said, we're gonna to try to keep this somewhat stock. So let's say LS pistons with say GSR cams or Type R cams. You know, it's probably gonna make like 170, 180. So it's generally gonna have lesser uh, compression than the you know poor man's Type R. So that's definitely just something to take into consideration. But you know, it's probably gonna make more horsepower and more torque, like I said, and it's gonna be cheaper. So right out the gate, if that's what you want, if that's what you were looking for then just get that. All right, so now we're gonna talk about the cons of LSB Tech. Now, this is gonna be somewhat debatable, I already know, because I truly have never built an LSB Tech engine, so I can't really speak on the, the, the good and the bad, but I'm gonna to try to give you somewhat of a general idea of what I think goes into these LSV Tech engines. So, 
statistically they are rest um statistically they are less reliable you know um i feel like the rod to stroke ratio is the only way i can truly say that but then again that's only just a small portion of how reliable the engine can can be for example the b16a i believe has a rod to stroke ratio of like 1.7 something and the stock a stock gsr has like 1.5 1.5 Eight, and I think a stock uh, LS VTEC is like 1.54 so they're not that much different they're not that far off um, but like I said statistically you know it is something to consider so that's why I say it will be less reliable or uh, that, that's that's not the true reason of why I kind of wanted to steer clear of the whole LS VTEC thing I feel like the reason why I truly stayed away from the LS VTEC was because I just wanted to have that peace of mind to say, you know, my engine's going to be okay, higher RPMs, and I really don't have to upgrade anything in the bottom end to compensate for that extra, you know, amount of stress or abuse that I put into the engine. So that's kind of why I got a poor man's type bar because I just didn't want to have any problems. I wanted to keep it all stock, relatively stock actually, and be okay. So by building the poor man's type bar, I know that I'm going to be okay and I'm not going to have any issues, or at least I hope I don't. So when should you build, you know, an LSV tech? I feel like it's, you know, once again, it's good for a daily driver as long as you build it right. I feel like it's good for occasional abuse and I feel like it's a proven cheap setup. Well, sort of cheap. I, I don't know. I don't know. You can't really say cheap. Cheap and LSV tech really don't go together because, you know, you got to do because you do have to put money in it but you know you don't have to do a stock rebuild like you can leave the bottom end stock and save a ton of money so I do think it's less it's, it's gonna be uh, you know cheaper than the poor man's type R but it's not gonna be you know extremely cheap and I feel like it's good for a quarter mile car especially when built um, you really shouldn't have any problems you know you're only gonna be putting 20 seconds of stress on it versus 20 minutes so that's a big difference um, but you know that's just what I think about both engines so in conclusion the one you should build is probably gonna be the LSV tech I still kind of want to build an LSV tech um, the first time I actually came across LSV tech was like back in 2013 and I was on the forums that was back when I was on the forums that I, I absolutely had no idea what anything was and I was like "Ooh, I'm gonna build an LSV tech and track it and everybody pretty much roasted me for that and said don't do that so I didn't do it and uh, here we are today so if you want to choose one of these two engines honestly I would just go LSV tech it, it just doesn't make sense to build a poor man's type 4 now it's too expensive and really I mean there's not much difference between these two engines so yeah that's the video and I will catch you guys in the next one